Perfect. Now we're going to move on to a very iconic kick, made famous by Jean-Claude Van Damme. You probably already know the kick name, just from saying that. And that is the helicopter kick, or most people will just actually know it as the Van Damme kick, or a pop 360 split kick, or a jump spin hook kick split, or a jump spin crescent split, however you do it. There's loads of different ways of doing it. Now, Van Damme tends to do it with a bit of a hybrid version. He doesn't actually normally do a hook kick, or a crescent kick, kind of does a diagonal downward kick in between. And there's reasons for that, which I'll explain uh, later on. But yeah, you can kind of change it and develop it to wherever you want. I'll give you a way of building it up from stages. So some of you will already be saying, I can't do that kick, it involves a split. But I'm gonna give you stages that will break it down. Literally, we're gonna start a jump, just a jump on its own, okay? So pretty much all of us that are watching this will be able to do at least stage one, then I'll build it up in different stages so we can progress. And it's important to follow those stages. Even if you can already do this kick, if you look at these stages, you might f spot an inefficiency in more of the basic stage and then realize why your end product, the, the kick itself, is not looking as good as it should be or why you're tilting, why you're falling, all that sort of stuff. So the, the stages will help you develop and hopefully improve um, your kick and if it doesn't it just reassures you that what you're doing is correct But I'm quite sure that somewhere in here there'll, there'll be a tip that hopefully will help you get an even better helicopter kick if you're doing it already If not, you've got the template and you'll have all the stages to build up to do this kick Right, so we're gonna start off with just a jump on its own now This is really important because it's to do with your weight distribution when you're jumping so what I mean by that is I'm actually, I'm just going to do the jump on, on the spot here facing towards you for a minute. We'll be obviously doing the kick in a different direction. But just the jump itself, it's really important that I don't lean or favor one side, even if it's six, let's say it's like 60-40. So I'm leaning on this leg just a little bit more. When I jump, it'll still tilt me and I'll favor going to that side. If it's even more percentage, then I'm going to be leaning even more. And if it's the other side, I'm favoring I'm going to be leaning that side. So if I've already got this inefficiency in just jumping, it's gonna get amplified when I start to add things. When I add the spin, then I'm gonna chuck myself across maybe with the arms a little bit more, and then it's gonna send me even more in a direction that I don't wanna go. When I add the, the kick or the landing, it's, it's gonna be rough, it's gonna be difficult to land. So it's important that you get these stages down. So when we jump, we're gonna try and focus on getting a 50-50 weight distribution on our legs. And when we jump, we're gonna leave from our toes. And as we jump, we're gonna drive our shoulders up. Because if we lean in or we look at the floor, then we're gonna lean forward. And then when we jump, we're gonna move that way. If I'm looking too far up, then I'm gonna be going backwards. So it's important that you're focusing in front of you, you're driving your shoulders up and you're leaving for your toes to get a nice spring. Okay, so when I jump, I'm springing. Okay, and that's pretty much on the spot. Should be, hopefully anyway. If it's not, it's because I've got that little problem with my knee. I think it's quite, pretty much dead on the spot. But try your best to, to do that. Now, you might say, God, this is, this is too easy. But trust me, when you get this now and we start to add the spin, you'll know where the mistake lies. Because if you're gonna do this one, then when you add the spin, and then let's see something happens wrong now, you could go, right, it's the spin that's the problem. Now I'll change the spin. What am I doing wrong in the spin? And then we can build it up to correct and get a, a better end product. So, when you're jumping, leave from your toes. What I mean by that as well is roll your feet and really leave from your toes. Don't leave too soon. It's a bit of a dead jump. If you leave from your toes, it springs you right up. You get a more efficient jump. You get more height in your jump, okay? So roll, drive your shoulders up, and leave from your toes. Work on that a couple of times. If you don't want to go to the next stage when we're adding the spin there, you can easily just work on your jump and make sure you're jumping up straight efficiently. Next stage is to add the spin, okay? So for this, I'm actually, I'm gonna demonstrate this way now so you can see my arms turning in. Now what a lot of people tend to do, the mistake they make is they chuck their arms across. Now if you chuck your arms across, even if you were jumping up straight, when you chuck your arms across, it's gonna send you in that direction. So when, if I did the kick then, the kick 
as I go, is going to be travelling across. One, the kick's not going to be where I wanted to, but two, the landing's not going to be that nice on my legs. It's going to, it's going to create the possibility of more injuries, and it's just inefficient. We don't want it that. We don't want to be uh, trying to aim for a target and missing it constantly, or an opponent if we're doing just more of the jump spin hook kick. Okay, so when you're doing your spin there, still focus on leaving from your toes, still focus on your shoulders going up, but with the spin, we're going to turn onto the ball of the foot, so the heel's pointing in the direction we're kicking as we're jumping, the knee's dipping in, the hip's dipping in, the arm's coming in, the shoulder's coming in, and the head is coming in to turn, and we're turning in on ourselves, so we rotate around and hopefully spin on the spot. Yeah, if I'm dragging those arms across too much, then that's where I'm going to go. If I'm jumping too much in or I'm pushing my butt across, I'm going to go that way. So it, it's not just your arms that can make the mistake, it can be a different part of your body. Even looking down, that's, that's where I tend to use uh, to make the mistake when I'm teaching. Because I just go, all right, yeah, focus on your spin and I'm looking down, already I'm hunching my body. When I'm actually doing the kick, I won't make that mistake because I'm looking at the target and I'm focusing on hitting something or just hitting the section of air, but I'm sighting back to it. So when I'm here, push through, leave through your toes, and spin on yourself. So now you're really gonna see whether I travel across. So let's see what happens. Okay, so when I'm here, I jump. Oh, I just happened to jump full on the spot. I'll give a good example for you anyway. I thought it was gonna be a bit bad because of my knee, but you get the idea. Now look how efficient that was. I actually jumped as well. I got across here, and I landed exactly in that center across again, okay? So that already shows my jump and spin, well it's better than I thought it'd be today, <laughs> but that's how it normally is for me. So then I'm confident whenever I do the kick, I know I can control that jump spin. If I was landing over here, and I didn't want to land over there, if I wanted to, then obviously yeah, it's great. But if I was doing that and I meant to stay on the spot, now that's a problem. Now we need to work on this jump spin to get on the spot. Now even though this, this uh, these stages are for the, the Van Damme kind of kick tutorial, but this is, a, this is for every jump spin kick. <laughs> so I'm not just kind of, the, all these stages will help you with all the jump spin kicks. So really focus on these stages because they'll help with all of it, especially your jump spin crescents and jump spin hook kicks. Jump spin back kicks a little bit different because of the way you set your hips. Jump spin and side kicks the same, jump spin hook kicks the same, jump spin crescent, jump diagonal. You all need that torque going across, so this will help you with all of those. Anyway, get that jump spin in uh, 360 on the spot, really good. And then what do you think we're going to add next? What, what could be the next stage? What can we add? So we, we started with the jump, we added the spin. Now you could just skip it and go to the kick, that'd be fine. Yeah, if, if you can do, do the kick already, you might just want to go straight to that. Some people will go with the chamber first, because they'll want to learn how to land on the one leg which is very good uh, safety for landing. I'm gonna skip that one today only because of my bad knee, but that would be the actual next stage we go to. What I don't wanna do is, is land all my weight onto my, my weakness, because then that's, that's where it's probably gonna go again. So the next stage would be to land on just the left, left leg and chamber. So I would jump, this leg would come out, and I'd land on this leg. I find when I do my jump spin hook kick, I hook kick through and I normally land on both feet, so I land two footed. So that's why I'm skipping the stage if you're wondering as well. I'm going to do it to the side so you can actually see the hook kick now. And the next stage would be then to add the kick. So I jump, I focus on everything I was talking about earlier, now I'm just going to add the kick and I'm hopefully going to land on two feet. Okay, so I'm here, I jump, I turn, and I go a little bit backwards. I think it's because I don't want to land on my left knee. As you can see, I'm a little bit hesitant. Okay, so I'm leaning a little bit more back on this. So yeah, I'd, I'd preferably be a little bit more centered. Yeah, but I know the reason why I'm doing that. Obviously you do as well. Okay, that would be the next stage. Working on the jump spin hook kick and trying to land efficiently on the spot. Now when that's second nature and you've got good control, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be on exactly on the spot. As long as it's only a little inefficiency, it could be a couple of centimeters one way, that's fine. Loads of people have that. Even when I'm demonstrating, sometimes for people, I'll, I'll, I'll travel a little bit, okay? If I'm really focusing, maybe I'm not going to travel as much. But if I'm just throwing it, not thinking sometimes, yeah, I might travel a little bit, okay? If it's a big gap, like I said earlier, it's a problem. That's something you need to correct because it's going to make it more difficult to do things in the future. Especially when you get more advanced. You might get away with a Van Damme kick if you've got a good jump. 
But when you go on to the Phelong Reigns, the Gyver Kicks, which hopefully we're going to get to today, then it's, it's going to show and you're going to really struggle or damage your leg that you're landing on. So the next stage then, once we've got that, that hook kick good, we're landing pretty much on the spot, we're then to be focused on the other leg because this one will come out. It's this one now that needs to create the split effect, okay? So to create the split effect, the leg needs to come out and the hips need to open. So if I'm jumping, say this is, uh, these are my legs now for a moment, okay? So I jump, as this leg is coming out from this chamber, I'm going to kick this one up and I'm gonna try and push, open my hips and push my chest forward, okay, with it. Because that way then it'll help me open my hips. It's kind of this motion as you're doing it, okay? Now this is a bit of a problem for momentum. It will actually kill your momentum a little bit. Okay, which is why Van Damme, when he gets to here, looks good, and then all of a sudden, he drops down diagonally. And that's because his torque that he's got going through, if he just did jump spin hook it, boom, it would just go straight through and all the way around. But now, because he's pushing out that back, it goes here, and then it drops diagonally down. Okay, you, you, can, you can change this kick a little bit to make it a bit more efficient, even more efficient than Van Damme if, if you keep practicing and you understand it a little bit. Yeah, but for his time, Van Damme, did this kick the best I've seen, okay, in his time. But obviously things develop and, and people improve on the technique and they understand why things happen. And there's people now that will be able to do this kick and be able to land or even add kicks, yeah, with, with good efficiency. So think about it as you're going through to really open those hips and kick that back leg up and also as if you're, you're kind of going to kick back on yourself which will really slow you down, but it gives more of an illusion for that split effect for a bit more time. And like I said, this is completely impractical for fighting. Okay, you wouldn't do this for fighting. This is a complete demo kick, all right? But it looks cool. Everyone, everyone likes this kick. It's a good starting point to, to, to really think about aesthetics or, or for a good demo piece. Everyone would want this as part of a demo break in a board or just you know, getting something to stand out or a picture, something. Anyway, so we're here, we're pushing eight, but this one's gonna go up and eight. That's the illusion we're trying to get, okay? So, hopefully that jump spin hook kick is second nature. Focus on that back leg now. Even if this one doesn't come out as much, you don't need to focus on this one so much. Focus on this one, get used to kicking that back leg eight. And when you do that, then you can focus more on both and get that kick. So I might even actually just do the jump spin but focus on maybe even kicking that leg out for a watch because of my, my bad knee. But you get the idea. You could just focus on that. But we're going to stick them together straight away just so I save my knee. <laughs> so when we're here, I'm going to jump. I'm going to spin. I'm going to kick this out and I'm going to shove this one up. Okay, I'm really going to think of kicking upwards with it and eight. Some people even focus like a twist kick if they want to do that. You can do that as well. So we're here. I'm going to jump, spin. I'm going to kick. Hopefully I'm going to keep that nice give you that nice split effect now, okay? So when we're here, when we jump, I kick, and as you can see, I'm still going through and landing on two foot. Hopefully that split effect was there. If not, I'm gonna give you some examples now of me doing this plenty of times, doing that split. It's only because obviously I've got a bit of a dodgy knee today. But hopefully those tips give you that Van Damme um, effect and you get that nice helicopter kick. Jump. Yeah, just play around with it, try and understand it, break it down from the, the bare minimum, and then work your way up to more advanced. If we wanna level eight more, I tend to do uh, more of this version. If I want to level eight more, all I have to do is with my hips, as you can see, like with my shoulders now, this shoulder's down lower to create this effect. All I have to do is just get the hips up more horizontal, so when I kick eight, this one will be more of the crescent kick as well. Um, but yeah, you'll get that more horizontal effect and the more level helicopter look. So, yeah, it's completely how you want to do it. My preference is this way, if you want to work to that way. It's all about just leveling the hips and the way you distribute your body leaning into it. So, have a little bit of fun playing with that and see what works best for you. I like to kind of be greedy and try and have everything. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's, that's the fun thing about training is testing your body and seeing whether you can do different variations. Yeah, so enjoy. Ah, 
Almost forgot, the last stage actually is just cleaning her up even more. The legs might look brilliant, but as you probably just noticed with mine, my arms were kind of just up and out, and some people kind of pull weird things with their arms. If you can do the kick, uh, the first kick out nice, and then you start to get the second kick out nice, you can focus on all the other little things that make it look even prettier, if it's for demonstration. Okay, so then you can focus on a guard. So you might even be posing for a picture and you just want that shot, so you're focusing more on a guard position, which is gonna make it more difficult to jump spin, but if you can create that and then drop a little bit less and you don't come around to the two feet like I did, then you'll have that nice photo look with the guard. Let's try and do one, just so, so you can see the difference. So if I'm here now focusing on more of a guard position, I'm gonna kick the legs up exactly what I was talking about earlier, but when I jump now, I'm just gonna be thinking of this with my hands. Now sometimes this one is a bit dodgy and gets in the way a little bit, but you'll see now. So I'm here, I'm gonna jump spin, I'm just gonna try and pull a guard, okay? Okay, hopefully that was decent enough to, to be an example. Okay, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could share this channel with others so they can benefit and we can keep growing as well. Thank you for your support. Team GMT.